So it looks like the iPad mini 7 is incoming. It should be announced October 28th, around the end of the month when Apple has their event, and then probably released and in the hands of people by the first week of November. So without further ado, let's talk about everything that the iPad mini 7 should have and should be upgraded to because it is one of my favorite Apple products of all time. Let's get into it. So Apple launched the redesigned iPad mini back in September of 2021, meaning we're now past three years from the last update. And again, the iPad mini is one of the slower iPads to get updated because there's only so much that you can do in terms of design language and changes in terms of updates. So usually it just gets an internal spec bump to kind of match the current lineup of iPads. And the current iPad mini, so the iPad mini 6, is equipped with the A15 Bionic chip, which was the same chip that was back in the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. And we did get that awesome redesign to match the entire iPad lineup, to match that iPad Pro from 2018, so it got a little bit more of an industrial design, edge to edge bezels, the bezels being even all around, and instead of Face ID, it still held on to Touch ID, but it was able to use things like the Apple Pencil 2, which is something that people loved because of the 8.3 inch display, the size, the form factor, the weight, the capabilities, the OS, how it's able to use all the different applications, and like I said, most importantly, be able to use the newest Apple Pencil 2, as opposed to that iPad 10 generation, which has that Apple Pencil 1 situation. So there's a few key things that'll be updated with the iPad mini 7. The overall form factor should remain relatively the same, if not exactly the same, but the first improvement we're gonna have is to the display itself. If you guys remember back in 2021, there was this gate that was called Jelly Scroll Gate, where people would navigate on the screen itself and then probably record it in slow-mo and it would get this kind of jelly scroll effect, meaning that like maybe one frame would move when the other frame wouldn't. And again, for the most part, you know, people forgot about it. Like I haven't heard the term jelly scroll in a long time. And as somebody who had the iPad mini for a while, I would only really notice it if I looked for it in day-to-day -day use, I really would not notice it at all. And I bet you if you ask 100 iPad mini users and iPad mini owners what jelly scrolling was, 99% of them would not know what that meant. So jelly scrolling will be alleviated with the new iPad mini 7 with the new LCD technology and how they actually assemble that display. But unfortunately, since it is the iPad mini and the 120 hertz ProMotion is reserved for pro monikered iPads and pro monikered iPhones, the iPad mini 7 should still have a 60 hertz display. So now in terms of internals and performance overall, Apple, I think moving forward, any product that they make will need to be Apple intelligence ready, no matter the price point. So internally right now, like I mentioned, it has the A15 Bionic in the iPad mini 6. So with the new iPad mini 7, it should either get the A17 Pro, which was in the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. It could possibly get the A18, which would put it in line with iPhone 16 and 16 plus, or Apple might mess around and actually just throw an M1 chip, which is currently in the M1 iPad Pros, as well as the M1 MacBook Air, which I do think Walmart still sells the M1 MacBook Air. But again, Apple, I don't think will be releasing any actual computers or iPads or iPhones that are incapable of running Apple intelligence. So I really don't think Apple would only put an A17 chip because that is not Apple intelligence ready. So at a minimum, it'll be as fast as a 15 Pro and Pro Max, which again, in their own right are still wonderful phones and plenty capable. So that's what we should get internally from a spec boost and performance boost. And also at a minimum, I think we are finally going, instead of 64 gigs as the base level storage, we're gonna be moving up to 128 gigs because we are in 2024 and it looks like Apple is going in that direction. Some other notable improvements internally, we should be getting Wi-Fi 6E capability and support, giving us faster Wi-Fi speeds. We're still gonna hold off on Wi-Fi 7, supposedly with the new iPad mini 7. And then also we will be getting Bluetooth 5.3, which gives you a little bit better latency, a little bit more bandwidth overall when connecting Bluetooth devices. Of course, we'll still have that USB-C port, but we should be getting some faster charging capabilities to coincide with MagSafe, even though the MagSafe will not work actually on the iPad itself. But we could get up to 25, maybe even 30 watt fast charging on the iPad mini to be able to top it off very quickly. It'll also still have Touch ID built into it and the camera will still be in that portrait orientation. And I think that's because of how the iPad mini size is. It's supposed to be a little bit smaller and most people use their iPad mini in portrait orientation versus things like the iPad Air and iPad Pro. Most people use that in landscape orientation, hence the reason why they move the selfie camera into that landscape orientation. And the iPad mini 7 will continue to have Apple Pencil 2 support and remains yet to be seen if we'll get Apple Pencil Pro support, which I highly doubt because again, that's reserved for the pro level iPads. And then some final rumors that we will be getting with the iPad mini is a new array of colors. So they should be some more playful pastel colors with the iPad mini. And then lastly, we should get an upgraded both selfie and rear camera. It remains yet to be seen if we'll get the 48 megapixel rear shooter on the back of it because I know that people actually use their iPad mini to take photos because of the form factor. But let's see exactly what Apple does from a camera standpoint on the iPad mini. Just know that they will be improved. 
Unfortunately, some things that will be missing, we will not be getting Face ID on here, which is something that I wanted. We will more than likely not be getting Apple Pencil Pro support because that would require the movement of magnets and chargers and things like that. But the biggest letdown is going to be that we, again, we will not be getting ProMotion, the display will not change. You know, the days of getting an OLED display with 120 hertz ProMotion on the iPad mini, just wouldn't make sense in Apple's price ladder. So for right now, we're staying with that same 60 hertz display, the LCD panel that Apple has been using for years and years with some small internal improvements to make the experience that much better. So again, don't hold your breath for 120 hertz iPad mini pro because that's not gonna be happening. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to this point in the video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below, but then also let me know in the comment, are you excited for a new iPad mini 7? Do you think Apple is gonna be changing something drastically on here that we didn't mention? Maybe Apple makes a keyboard of sorts for the iPad mini, because as we are all aware, the iPad mini 6 does not have any pin connectors, meaning it cannot connect to any sort of magic keyboard or any keyboard for that matter, unless it's a Bluetooth keyboard from a third party, because the only first party accessories for the iPad mini are going to be that folio case that Apple provides. But that'll do it, as I mentioned, leave some comments down below on your thoughts on the iPad mini 7 that should be coming in the next coming weeks. But if you want to watch more videos like this one, be sure to check this video up here because YouTube thinks you're going to like that one. And if not, check out the video down below because that's a video I think you're going to like. But that'll do it, everybody. Until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm excited for this thing. Peace.